At 29 and I find myself wondering What did happen to the last 10? You were sitting in your cabin, your hands were moving fastly on the keyboard. You sighed and glanced at the stack of files and sticky notes which were placed on the table. Your corpus had dumped a mountain of work on you, an hour passed and you were still working diligently on your laptop. You grabbed the red color file and opening it you found that you needed a signature of Mr. Felix who was your corpus business partner. He was renowned as arrogant in the office and almost every girl had impressed but he was not the guy who can get impressed by anyone so easily. You never got a good vibe by this man as you witnessed him staring at you wiping your palms on your skirt. You gathered up some courage and standing up from your chair you grabbed the red color file. Though you didn't want to face him but you need the signature no matter how much you wish to avoid it. Wine, it's just a signature, I don't need to yourself. Taking a deep breath, you left for his cabin. You knocked at his cabin door, feeling your knee while your palms were already slick. You got no answer, which made you gulp down. You knocked again slowly, but no answer. That time, you heard Felix asking from inside to come in. You slowly opened the door and looked down as you didn't want to see his face. Sir, here is the file you need to sign, you said. Felix looked at you. Suddenly you hear the loud thumb on the floor which made you look at the direction. Your eyes widened when you saw Emily. Her lipstick was smudged and her hair was in mesh. You quickly looked on the other side trying to adjust the scenarios. Felix, oh I am really sorry Miss Vyan. By the way, what brings you here? He asked looking at your face. You merely groaned but acted calm as you didn't want him to get mad. Vyan, I needed signature hair. As I said earlier, sir, we are trying to control her. Alex, oh I see. He said grabbing the pen from the table. His eyes were fixed on your pissed up face while he was signing the papers. You looked around to see Emily sitting on the couch waiting for him. There you go, Miss Vyan, all done. He said grabbing the pen while sliding the file back to you. You reach for the file. He quickly placed his hand on the table. Alex, if you ever need something, you know where to find me. The doors of my heart, oh, I'm in cabin, are always open for you. He said with a playful smirk curling around his lips. You forced a tired smile and stretching the file from his hand. You hurriedly ran towards the door, your face burning hot. Felix Poe, I was peacefully doing my work in my cabin and then the door opened revealing my ex. I got annoyed seeing her cause I don't want her to visit my cabin. I have some new admirers here and I don't want them to get hurt knowing that I am still in wish. Though I try to but she is a clean. When she comes to me, she just smiles. I don't want to be bothered while working, but she being stubborn always comes in my cabin. Suddenly I hear the knock on the door which made me groan. I said the word come in while pressing the bridge of my nose. It was Lee Wyan. I don't know why her face is always pissed off. Or maybe it only happens when I am around, she is not like other girls, which is the main reason of me trying to express my feelings. She is so beautiful and innocent. When she left, Emily came to me again, but this time I stopped her. Felix, go. I said, looking through the open window, she frowned and nudging my shoulder. She asked me to look at her. Emily, why? Why but? Don't tell me. It's because of that girl. She said near my ear. 
Felix, yeah, so what? I reply, looking into her teary eyes. Felix, didn't I ask you to not get attracted by me, who? Huh? I start making her so fakely. Here I mention the word fakely because I know she will sooner find someone new. Sure, I don't need to feel sorry for her. She glared at me for one last time and then left outside, making me sigh in a relief. Suddenly, I remembered that Jungkook wanted my presence in his cabin, wearing my overcoat I left for his cabin. Arthur's bow. Jungkook was sitting in his cabin, reading some important files when he heard a gentle knock on his door, he saw letting the person come in. As soon as he looked up, his heart beat raced faster, staring at your innocent face. Why and good morning, Mr. Jungkook. These are the files you needed to check. You are smiling at him as you place a stack of files on his table. Jungkook, oh thank you so much Miss Vyan for doing this work so earlier. My company really needs diligent and hard working employees like you. He said and grabbed the check. Vyan, it's an honor getting complimented by you boss. You said slightly bowing down at him, his smile, but all of a sudden the cabin door swung open and fell centered in with a huge grin plastered on his face. Sweat started to cover your body as she looked at him, feeling uneasy you were about to take the polite exit when Felix came to you. Felix, this morning I must have seen someone lucky because I am able to see you twice. He slightly winking at you. Jungkook looked at you and noticed that Felix's presence was making you feel sad. Clearing his throat, he spoke up. Jungkook, Secretary Vyan, you may go now. He said, making you sigh in a relief. You quickly bowed down at him and left before Felix could say something else. Felix, he, why you let her go? He groaned, walking to Jungkook, Jungkook, because she is innocent. He replied while typing some random words on his laptop screen. Felix, she is innocent, that's why I'm trying, but she deserves He said sitting on the chair before Jungkook. Jungkook, hey, don't think of her like your other admirers. He said with girly this time. Felix, but why you are so concerned about her? Do you like her? He asked, narrowing his eyes suspiciously while looking at his face. Jungkook. When I said so, she is just innocent, that's why I don't want you to hurt. He replied while looking around. Jungkook, when I said so. Jungkook himself didn't know that's why he was concerned about you. You were his secretary, but still he wanted to protect you always. Felix, okay, fine. I won't. Happy? He said in a sad voice. Time skip. It was around 9 o'clock, the time when office closed, you were putting your belongings into your bag. After submitting the important files to your boss, Jungkook. You walked towards the office where you saw your boss shooting at someone, your eyes widened when you came closer and saw him holding his hand. An anger was visible in his eyes which made you scared. Jungkook, if you were single work properly, then why don't you deserve to work in June company? You are fired. Why you took the responsibility when you were not able to fulfill it? He was yelling at him and you got flinched by his sudden outburst. Everyone in the office knew that Jungkook had anger issues which begins May when something is not done according to his will. Employee, I'm sorry boss, he was stuttering. Jungkook, we're sorry, hmm? Will your sorry help me to create billions of dollars deal which I am gonna lose it's just because of you? Go away, here, because I do something, he said. You could see his neck nay, veins were popping out, implied. Please boss, don't fire me from this job, he said. Jungkook, your eyes widened as you ran to him and held his hand. As soon as you held his hand, Jungkook looked at your shark, your hands slightly trembled as looked into Jungkook's eyes. Mayan, Mr. Jungkook, please calm down, you said noticing him breathing heavily. Jungkook, you don't know how badly he messed up. You know how important. 
important it was, he said lowly. When Mr. Jungkook relaxed, calm down, don't panic. You said placing your hand. Jungkook, but he was cut off by you. When Mr. Jungkook blamed me and you, you may go now. Don't make him pissed off. You said to an employee who nodded and ran away, Jungkook, but why? You let him go. You cut him off again. When Mr. Jungkook, please come with me. You said walking inside the office, he didn't resist and silently fall with you. As you reached the cabin, Jungkook pressed his fingers on his forehead as if he was trying to control his anger. You went nearer to him. Taking a deep breath, you looked at him. Why, Mr. Jungkook, we really need to relax. There is a solution of everything and you just need to find that solution. You rub his hand gently. Jungkook felt like his anger started to decrease. He looked into your eyes, the rage in his eyes vanished. And your innocent eyes met him. Ryan, don't worry, I am done with my work. I will do just mail me the details. You said, still holding your hand, Jungkook, but it's too much looking at you. Ryan, Mr. Jungkook, still I will do it until the morning. You said, giving him a reassuring smile. Jungkook sighed and then nodded. You smiled, trying to go out, but noticed the Mind my hand, you said, pointing at his hand. Jungkook, oh, I am sorry, said Ryan. He said, leaving your hand. Mind, it's okay, I will go now. You took the few steps forward, Jungkook. Secretary, Ryan is too late. I will drop you home and I'm not gonna hear any excuse. He said, fixing his coat while working to you. Reaching the car, he made you sit on the passenger seat and he said, driver seats is the moment. He was feeling so relaxed and calm. When you asked him to leave, he felt sad because he didn't want to leave. It was giving him a warmth. But for the first time in his life, he was feeling something strange in his heart. Why and stop the car, Mr. Jungkook here. I reached my house. She said, pointing at the door. Jungkook nodded, stopping the car. Why and thank you, Mr. Jungkook. You said, going at him. Jungkook, it's fine. He said, offering you a warm smile, you were about to come from the car when he called your name from behind. Secretary Vyan, are you sure you will be able to do all alone? He asked. His voice was showing kind for you, Vyan. Yes, Mr. Jungkook, I will do all the work. You said, giving him a smile, and then you got off the car. After 20 minutes, you were working on the laptop. Jungkook had mailed you half of the work. As it was a lot, he didn't want you to do all the work alone, so he will do half of the work by himself. The next morning, you go to dark circles around your eyes as you just slept for two hours, but gladly you had finished the work. Stretching your arm, you look at the wall clock, which was showing 8.45 o'clock, your eyes were done, realizing that you had only 15 minutes to get ready. You quickly jumped off from the bed cup path, and then you came out, slipping into a dress. When we tanked up, you quickly did some makeup, and you left for the office, skipping the breakfast. Reaching the office, you ran to the elevator and pressed the button for the top floor. The doors were just near to shut down when a pointed a black shoe stopped letting it come together. You looked up to see your boss with his cold face entering in. You quickly bowed down at Jungkook as he made an eye contact little longer than he should. Seeing you, his face lit up as he bowed back. You leaned against the wall hesitantly. Suddenly, the elevator jolted up. A stop which made your eyes widen in a shock. Why and what was that? You asked while panicking. Chanku, calm down, Sakati Wyan. I guess he stopped for a moment. He started trying to console you. He's lingering on your face. You nodded and you both stood for a good minute, but it didn't move. Wyan, it's not stunning, Mr. Chanku. You said worriedly. Chanku, just wait a little more. It will start sooner, he said. You waited for a few more minutes, but it didn't start. Jungkook, I think you can just open the doors, Miss Wyan. He said, pointing at the buttons. You looked at the buttons and pressed the one to open the door. Nothing happened, so you kept pressing it, Wyan. I guess we are stuck. You said, pacing back and forth in a tiny space. Jungkook realized that we were scared of elevators.
Jungkook sa gati wayan stay calm. He sa looking into your eyes. Wayan, how I can calm down? He sa loudly holding his hand. Jungkook, will panicking help you to open the door? No, right? He questioned. You didn't focus on his words and kept looking at around as if you were finding something to throw on the elevator door. Jungkook, Miss Wayan, I'm talking to you. He said. Why and what now, Mr. Jungkook? I said I can't be. You were speaking out, but he cut you off. Soon the doors opened. Jungkook looked at you, frowned. As you stepped out, there was an old man with a broom in his hand. You looked at him and at Jungkook inside the lift who was fixing his shirt. Old man, oh, what happened to this new generation? Young people, this place is not right. Are you hearing me? He said, looking at both of you, frowned. Jungkook chuckled while your face turned into fresh new tomato wine. I'm sorry, you apologize for the thing which I'm not. You didn't stay there for a second and hastened away from there as soon as you could. Reaching your cabin, you plopped down on the chair, breathing heavily. Wine, he kissed me. What he would be thinking about me? You thought to yourself by biting your lips nervously. The train of your thoughts broke when you heard a familiar voice, Jungkook. Secretary Wayan, come to my cabin. He said while knocking at your desk. You got down looking at him before I could utter some words he left for his cabin. Wayan, oh my. What would I say to him that you, Mr. Jungkook, that's why I couldn't. You murmured to yourself by putting your both hands on your cheeks. Wayan, I guess I should ignore him. You said in your mind and started to do your work. Jungkook spoke. It's been half an hour that I am waiting for Wayan in my cabin, but she didn't show up. When I asked her to visit my cabin, maybe she is feeling shy. I thought to myself, but I couldn't just let her ignore me like this, so I grabbed the intercom and called her to be in my cabin in two minutes. The girl was cut by her as she didn't even bother to utter some words, which made me groan. Jungkook, Mr. Lee, go to Miss Wayne cabin and tell her that I want her presence in my cabin as soon as possible. I said at my personal manager, Mr. Lee, okay boss, he said. At the spa, you were working on the laptop when Mr. Lee knocked at your cabin door. Wayan, please come in. Mr. Lee, Miss Wayan, Mr. Jungkook called you in his cabin and he specially told me to bring you with me. He said, smiling at you. You gulped then with an nod. You forced a smile and then headed to his cabin following Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee knocked at the door and Jungkook asked you both to come in. You and Mr. Lee entered in the cabin. Jungkook, Mr. Lee, you may go now. He said in a cold voice, his eyes fixed on your face. Mr. Lee bowed and he left the cabin. Jungkook got up while fixing his coat. He walked to the door. Jungkook, so Mr. Lee, why am ignoring me? He said, taking slow steps. Why am Mr. Jungkook, who mumbled, taking few steps back? Jungkook, what Mr. Jungkook, huh? He said, almost making your accent. He kept asking to you, Jungkook. You like me, Wayne, don't you? You remained quiet and kept looking down at his shoes, which made him pissed off. Your eyes widened, hearing his word. You didn't know how to respond, as you were too shy to say something. 
but you somehow gathered up some courage when I'm sorry I can't. You said and ran outside the cabin, Jungkook, what? Did she rejected my proposal, but why? I need to know that, he said with no flaring. Letting out a deep sigh, he opened the door of his cabin where he saw you talking to some employees. Jungkook, leave my and get in my office right now. He lays the itch wet of your name, making the shiver run down your spine. But you ignored him and kept talking to the employees who were not interested in your talks as they saw Jungkook walking to you. He took you inside his cabin, making you flinch. Jungkook, oh, you could just reject my proposal like that. When you are my boss, you said string. Jungkook looked at you in a disbelief. If you and me are together and happy, there is nothing else which matters for me, he said, making your eyes filled with tears. Jungkook, stop crying, he said, making your eyes smile. After two hours, my and boss, you said while crying.